Becoming a parent is a life-changing event. We road test five first-time parents on the greatest ride of their lives as they share the first four months of life after birth. Tonight, our mums and dads attempt to spread their wings. But with babies around, accidents happen. I'm going to pick up tonight. Friendships are tested. He shouldn't be going to fucking Hawaii. Amy's too good for that. You can say whatever you want. I've got some fucking six other guys telling me that I should do whatever I want. And something is still not right with baby Katie. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do either, honey. I don't care what they say. This is not normal. Jennifer's mum, Tina, is leaving after spending a month helping Jennifer through her confinement. <laughs> An exhausted Alan has just driven four hours from Orange to say goodbye. Jennifer is an independent lady. I think she can do it. But if she need me, just call me. It's always sad to say goodbye. <laughs> My confinement days are finally done as well. So excited, but sad. I'll see you soon. Bye, Mom. Careful. Bye. Bye. Alan's got to get back to Orange for his shift at the hospital. And this time, Jennifer and Caden are going with him. But there's one thing Jennifer has to do along the way. You ready for your first bit of cold food for 38 days? Any time now. Any second. <laughs> During the confinement, I wasn't allowed anything that's cold. So I'm really craving for something freezing. It's taking forever. He's doing that on purpose. It's all served. Cheers. To the end of... Confinement. <laughs> Stop trying to take my ice cream. <laughs> It's really, really, really good. It's the best ice cream. While Jennifer savours the taste of freedom, Alan's glad to have his family back. In the next couple of months, my schedule is going to be even more busy. I'll definitely need to take advantage of every opportunity I have to spend time with him and to spend time with Jennifer as well. Four hours later... Welcome to your new house for the next six days. <sighs> Finally, eh? Yeah. The place looks really nice. Hopefully it'll be a good week ahead. Now that Katie's being treated for her thyroid problem, Harry and Marty are hoping she'll settle down. But it's been another rough night. It was one of those nights where you're up every half hour trying to settle her down and finally getting her to settle down and then getting her to bed and then her waking up again. You can be up 10, 12 times in a the night. There's no milk left. We have so much shit to take with us everywhere. They're off to get Katie's photo taken after turning up on the wrong day a week ago. I'm tired. I'm ready to go? No, I'm ready to go back to bed. For the inner city couple, the trip to the outer suburbs soon becomes an adventure. What is this place? I'm not sure if we're still in Sydney or not. Really, we are in we're the middle of the country. I take a, it's a creek. It's a billabong. We're only half an hour late, which is not so bad. Yeah, we lost all our luck getting through Sydney. We have terrible luck. Correct. Having Katie, it's been stressful, it's been tiring, but it's been only positive. We're much closer, Harry and I, and we're a couple again, and I didn't think that was going to happen. Actually, no, we actually, have, we actually do have good luck. It just be, a lot of things go against it, but somehow we get through it for some reason. Yeah, we do okay. Yeah. And that little tiny thing in the back there is pretty cool. Yeah, she's all right. I think we'll hang on to her. Yeah. Things between Marty and I have definitely like 110% improved. I would love it to work out forever. I've never met anyone who's stimulated me the way that he does and who's challenged me and who's kept me entertained. Are we just gonna stop our baby from getting burnt in the face by the sun? Um, baby's not gonna get burnt in the face because Big Daddy with his broad shoulders is protecting her. 
<laughs> yeah, whatever. I think as much as anyone was made for me, I think it's him. Hello. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very Hi. much. Excellent. You're going to in your black shirt. Okay. And you take your watch off. Okay. No, no. You can have lunch in a minute. Come on, sweetheart. Hello. Hey. 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 She, she needs to take uh, thyroxin every, every day. And she'll have to take it, well, f pretty much forever. Her thyroid's not developed, it's underdeveloped. And... Despite taking her thyroid medication, Katie's still unsettled. Hey, hey. Sorry, she's really fussy. I think require more food. <laughs> The couple's patience is wearing thin, and they're beginning to feel a horrible sense of deja vu. Yeah, yeah, we've had some wonderful nights like that. You don't know how much of why she's unsettled has got to do with the thyroid. Mm. Yeah. Have you been given...? No, they haven't been very forthcoming with any sort of information about... Right. Yeah, we're just trying to muddle through as much as possible. Yeah. Congratulations on giving Amy a second baby to look after. <laughs> Glenn and his mates are gearing up for a wet the head night. His best friend Mitch has put a lot of effort into this surfy rite of passage. I've no idea what wet the head really means other than the father goes out with their mates. Surf filmmaker Glenn is excited about the possibility of getting Tuesday. work in Hawaii. Yeah, the pop comp starts Tuesday. I'm thinking of going Monday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Straight away you get a break from... You're Paris seriously going to go, are you? Maybe. To Hawaii? Yeah. Fuck, no, you can't. you got a little baby to look after. <laughs> no, I, I like it. Amy does. <laughs> she said that, yeah, I can. Yeah, but that doesn't Footage. matter. I think that's one of those girl tests. Like when they oh, say... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they don't want yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. While the boys discuss female psychology, Amy and her bestie, Monique, get ready to go to a hen's night. Hello. This is the first time I've left Mako at home. Glenn's parents are going to look after Mako tonight. So, yeah, I've expressed a couple of bottles. I'm feeling a bit mixed. I probably miss him. I haven't gone this long without feeding before. So that'll be interesting to see if, like, my boobs pop out of my top <laughs> or explode or whatever. Seriously, Tink. So, is Glenn going to have a big night? Well, he sent me a video before of Mitch and Drinking beers out of a flipper. Come on, Mitch. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Trying to go to have the buddy went the other way, you went down. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> the best idea I've actually ever had was having these bottles. <laughs> he just had a baby! He just had a baby! <laughs> Tomato. Tomato. As the boys raise their glasses to fatherhood, for the girls, it's all about the spray tan. Alan? Amy, show me again. Is that the colour you're going to be tonight? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> what? Nothing, I'm just asking. Make me self-conscious or not. <gasps> you are such a bitch. I hate my body. <laughs> it's gross. Like, my boobs are huge. <laughs> too big. I feel fat. Like, my clothes don't fit properly. And if they do fit, they look yuck. I just don't have time with my appearance as much. Makeup and hair and everything. Harry and Marty are at the end of their tether. A few photos have been taken, but Katie is still distressed. They decide to pack it in. This is what she's like. Yeah, mentally, it, it sounds like it's a, a pain for her. There's something going on. Yeah. And because it's so subtle. See, but I just don't know what the fuck to do because we're seeing paediatricians and we're seeing endocrinologists and we're seeing all of these doctors and these specialists and no one seems concerned about this. No one seems to give a shit. All they just say is feed, it's normal, just feed her, just feed her, just feed her, it's totally normal. That's not totally normal. Being the best mum in the world, you really are. You've done an awesome job. You should be really proud of yourself. I think so. Don't 
she dare be all yeah, cute now? If she has a nap, if she has a big nap that when we get home, we'll be OK tonight. If she doesn't, we'll be in trouble. I feel frustrated because if she has just been fed and she's still carrying on and you don't know what is wrong with her, you can't solve the problem, then you just feel useless anyway because you're just carrying a screaming baby around with you. You're the devil. You're the devil. She is, isn't she? She is. She's the devil. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. You are Thank welcome. you very much. See you later. Good afternoon. Let's go home. Yeah. Let's... Yeah, that was hard. That was just tough. Um, I don't ever want to do that again. It's not your fault, Alan. Get yourself up. I don't care what they say, this is not normal. Yourself up is not, 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 okay? Yeah. Feeding her, yeah. not shut her. Sorry. Enough. There's obviously something more going on. It's not just. She's hungry. We've got to call somebody, okay? We've got to call. Uh, who do we talk to? I don't know who we talk to. I don't know what's going on with her. Honey, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Baby Matisse is also refusing to settle. Damien and Kiri stagger through a string of sleepless nights. Last night, she just had a really bad night and was really unsettled again, so couldn't stop screaming. It's hard because we didn't get any sleep like at all last night. But I make a big effort to take Matisse out of the bedroom and into her room and give her a good feed and wait till she's settled before I go back in, um, just so I don't wake him up too much. The exhausted couple decide to spend the weekend at Kiri's parents' farm, where help is at hand. Kiri's mother, she used to be a midwife, and she stayed with us for two weeks. She would know exactly what to do after the baby was crying. The longer you take, the longer we're going to be in traffic. I'm glad we're going to Canberra this weekend to see the family, because as soon as we get there, he just sleeps, like, the whole weekend. You get undies? Yep. I don't see any. They're in there. Well, there's one thong, You have to get them. You ready, honey? Yeah, I'm good to go. Huh? I'm good to go, babe. Thank you. Mm. Oh. Let's go. You got your phone, chargers and all that? I didn't bring your charger. Go get my chargers, honey. Mm. This is bullshit. Why are we doing this to us? As we said, 3.30. I said, come and pick me up from the shop. But I couldn't pick you up from the shop. Like, I, I did tell you, you need to come home at 3 o'clock. And then... I didn't have a car. Up. That's why I said pick me okay. up. Okay, well, then it's not my fault, uh. is it? It's not your fault. You didn't have a car. Okay? It's okay. <laughs> I think he pushes it pretty hard. I think he's got to be careful of sleep deprivation. He doesn't realise how much it really puts on his body. You should aim to get seven and a half to eight hours of sleep every night. And that's why you're not losing weight. I've lost weight. Look, my tummy's going down, baby. No start for a feed, babe. It's all about timing. You've got to get the timing right. Is she good now, babe? Put her in the sleep? Is there a, is there a technique for her to burp at the moment, or can we wait, or can we give her a pat down? She's going to pass out for a few hours, and Mum's going to have a little snooze in the car, catch up on some sleep. I'll keep an eye on her. Back on the road. Here I can give you a massage. Oh, oh. Oh, babe, you're the best. I've got my two babies with me. Soon another baby next year. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, honey? It's so easy. So, honey, Glad. 
takes it up the ass, do that. <laughs> Glenn's wet the head night is also hotting up. Now what do we do? Wait until she blows it out, you dickhead. The boys have brought Glenn to the pub where Amy used to work. I've got... How long ago did you meet Amy in here? Yeah. 2009, Chuck Allen Challenge. Yeah. One, one, one round of drinks later. After four weeks of having a kid, it hasn't really changed much for me, so I've still been able to go surfing and see my mates and... It hasn't really restricted us at all. But best mate Mitch has other ideas. You can't go to fucking Hawaii. I think you should go, mate. You You're have a baby, you shouldn't leave You're completely her. fucking confused. Yeah, but she says you can go, but you stop, shouldn't. Stop, stop, stop. Amy is not the kind of person that says you can go when you really can't go. You should be working Mitch, and doing Mitch, whatever Mitch. you can to support Mitch. that baby. Mitch. This mistress has said, can you... it's all right. It... Then it's all Fuck it. Yeah. You can say whatever you want. I've got fucking six other guys telling me that I should do whatever I want, which I'm going to do. Whatever supports that baby gives you closer to moving out of home. Fuck that. Go overseas in six months. Don't leave your fucking missus that just had a baby out of a fucking little tight vag and has had it split into a fucking burn down farm. All right, what are we doing now? You need to feed him, don't you? Do your hair, get dressed. My hair's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you! All I'm gonna think about is my hair and elbows tonight. Oh, sorry, Bubby. Mind to wake him up. What if he? We'll be leaving soon, okay? Whatever, Chelsea. All right, bye. <laughs> Stop. Oh, go, buddy, go. Do you reckon you can tell you're in a hurry? None of my close friends are really having babies at the moment, so I guess I'm scared of not being able to spend time with my friends and they can still go off and do what other 24-year-olds are doing, travelling and going out, and I've got a little human being that I have to look after. Is he still going? Stuck anyway? What time is it? 6.15. We're going to get in there at 7.30. What? You know how I said, hey, sorry, just feeding Bubba. They put a devil face, like, come on, quick, suck away. <laughs> what? Is that from Glenn? Yeah, I said, how are you going? And he said, going OK, how are you going? Mitch is a see you next Tuesday. <gasps> ha ha jokes, you going OK. Yeah. Mitch, I, no, I bet you he said it because Mitch has done something to him. He shouldn't be going to fucking Hawaii. Amy's too good for that. When he could be working at the fucking factory and earning money. It's still up in the air if I do go or not. Mitch obviously thinks that I shouldn't go, and it, it means a lot to me what he thinks. But what I want to do is what I want to do, and um, I wouldn't do it unless I knew that my family, in regards to Mako and Amy, are OK. Hey, Monique is on burping duty. I need something to put over my shoulder. He won't spew. Oh, OK. Hello, little boy. Oh, my gosh. You're lucky, you cute little boy. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to pick up tonight. He, like, never spews. Does it come out of silk, do you think? <laughs> Mummy's going to go Bye. now. Bye. OK, have See fun. Bye. 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 While the girls race off to catch the end of their hen's night, out on the street... I've had a great night, but unfortunately the, the beers get the better of all well, the boys eventually. Things get pretty emotional. I fucking hate you so much, but I, I love you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hugs all round as Kiri and Damien arrive at the farm. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Damien. Always talk. Uh, it's been two weeks since Alida and Jim have seen their granddaughter, so they're up for a late-night chat. Put the kettle on, Jim. Yes, please. With Matisse due for her first vaccination, Kiri remembers Damien still hasn't had his. Well, you need to get your whooping cough vaccination. Whooping cough. Whooping cough. Whooping cough, yes. The needle's about this big. Oh, Don't tell him that. That's why he doesn't want it. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Forget about it. He's joking, Jamie. <laughs> Darling, if, if, if Matisse well, what gets... Why would I get one of those because if you get it, right? Why am I going to get it? Because, because you don't have the vaccination. I'm not the freak goes around. For the last 37 years, I haven't had that cough, so why would I get it all of a sudden? Because you could a daughter. get it. Oh, he's an expert. He knows. So where did it come but from? Where did it come from? Yeah. It's oh, been from, around from forever. From the caveman, Damien. It doesn't really matter where it came from. It's been around forever. It makes you more of a man if you take yeah. it, <laughs> <laughs> but Damien's not convinced. If you get it, Jim consults an ancient medical book. Read up about whooping cough. 
Okay. See what they did in 1922. He didn't exist back then, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> Came out after the war. Are you even looking at anything? He's a bit deadly. It'll be here somewhere. Time. Oh, it's poor, darling. Yeah. There you go, you're pink off. Okay. It's contagious. Yeah, it's very contagious. That's why, you know, they say that all the adults should be immunised too. Is the needle that big? That big. Well, actually, Damien, it's a little it's bit bigger. bigger. Yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Good boy. Yeah. Damien yeah. agrees to toe the line. Children have to have And with a leader back on grandma duty, the new parents get a good night's sleep. I'd like to say that I, I, that I help out. It's a 50-50 split, but it's probably not. 70-30? Yeah, yeah, probably more like it. I'd say that for me as well. About 70-30, like, roughly, like, yeah. Like counting work? Counting work? No, no, no. no I, I, I don't yeah. count work. Just, like, no, yeah, just, that's... The moment that's you come home. Good. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think Alan's been pretty good. As soon as he stepped in the house, I'll tell him to wash his hands, take a shower, and I'll hand Caden over to him. Everything's 50-50. Like, she's up and expressing, and I'm up and feeding. I still consider myself, like, the first line. <laughs> if he doesn't settle for me, I'm, I'm always happy to, to hand him off and tag her in. I had a little bit of an episode last night oh, where oh. Damien was very, very tired, yeah. as he always is, and... Matisse was a bit unsettled and I needed to get ready for bed and I kept just handing her over to him and every time I handed her over to him, she would scream and I think, no, you've got to learn how to settle yeah. her. Like, he ended up getting really, really frustrated, really, really upset about it, saying he doesn't have the patience and it just made me feel like this is such a vital time, I really want them to bond yeah, and I, I really want yeah. him to be an involved father. I've had a long day, you come home, I think the baby can feel that energy mm. too. So if I haven't got that patience, I just can't. I can't unwind. I need a few hours to unwind. Amy does a lot. She wakes up for his feeds during the night. Which, I mean, there's not a lot that I can really do. Mm. But if there's something to Seems do around like the house. very easy. Nine, yeah. five, five. Oh, no, nah, come on. <laughs> give, me, give me a bit more credit than that. <laughs> name, name one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably 80, 80, 80 20, yeah. <laughs> You're messy and you're smelly and noisy. This doctor today had better have some answers, that's all I'm saying. After baby oh, Katie's disastrous photo in. session, Harry and Marty are frustrated and confused. No one said definitively it's not to do with this thyroid condition or it is to do with a thyroid condition. If someone just gave a definitive answer and maybe some, some practical advice on what to do, as opposed to just feeding, just feeding, 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 it's just poisoning all of our good experiences of this whole thing. Babies are meant to eat up to eight times a day. Well, how about 20 times a day? You need to grow a third breast. We can't be friends anymore. I just want some fucking answers. Mm. The doctor refers them to a Tresillian family care centre where they get their first big clue as to Katie's problem. She's still underweight, very, very underweight. It's quite horrifying when they tell you that three weeks after birth, your baby still hasn't put on their birth weight. It does explain why she's crying so much. If she's that hungry, but it's because she's starving. It's, she's starving. It's torture. We've been putting, torturing her. Putting, uh, putting her in danger. Yeah, unintentionally, but you know, I mean, it's all very well and good saying we didn't mean to. It doesn't make any difference. No, we still did. No. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. It's so unbelievably shit because not only. Do you get that hideous, horrible, fucking horrendous phone call telling you that there's a problem with your kid? As if that's not the worst call you can get as a, as a new parent. Then you find out afterwards that not only do you have a sick kid, you're not feeding it. But they're still not sure whether it's Harry's milk supply or if the newborn isn't getting enough from the milk. We've been told now it's 20 minutes on either breast and followed by 30 mils of formula. We're hoping that our lives, our quality of life, will improve astronomically. Sunday morning is a searing 40 degrees as Kiri and Alida head out for the day. So we're off to my grandma and, and grandpa's house to have lunch with them so they can meet Matisse for the first time. While the women take care of family business, the men take respite from the heat after Jim evicts another lounge lizard. I think Jim's roots take him back to the farm because that's where his family came from. He's done a great job with the leader. 
And it's hard work. It, it's really, really hard work. And um, it's really good chilling out here. Well, there's four generations here. Isn't that wonderful? Well, that's a really nice yeah. one. My father's Greek and my mother is Dutch, Australian. We've been brought up with, yeah, mixed cultures, but very much in the Australian way of life with a bit of Greek heritage. So I'm very proud of that. But um, it's definitely not as full on as Damien's family. See, my father came out in 1955. It was all pre-planned. So my mother had a photo of my father and she actually managed to hunt him down and, and uh, that was it. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, Sunday morning and out from plumbing and she's going, when are you going to get married? When are you going to have kids? Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. She should be able to have six or seven at least in ten years. Well, according to Damien, they're having ten. No, oh, well, he's, no. he's revised that, has he, Kerry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree with you, definitely not ten. <laughs> not even six, though. No, not no, I, I think four would be the max. Mm -hmm. We did say four, could be six. Being young is also a bonus too, because as time goes on, if we want five or six kids, we can still do that, which is great. Amy and Glenn are having a catch-up after their big Saturday night out. How was you wet the head? It was pretty funny. And Mitch got pretty drunk and didn't want me to go to Hawaii. <laughs> and he didn't, didn't want to hear the answer, no. But Glenn's made up his own mind. I'm not going to Hawaii. Ended up not really being able to get enough work to make it worth me going. So just pulled the pin on it for this year. Oh, so you do care what Mitch thinks? I care what he thinks. It's not going to change my opinion, though. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've never met someone so stubborn than Glenn. How did you go? With the hens? Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was good to see the girls, but um, when I was out, I could feel like my boobs were just, like, getting <laughs> more swollen and they were tingly and stuff because oh, he was obviously having the bottle here. He was due for a feed. So your boobs are like psychic? Pretty much. <laughs> well, they're on timer. The timer went off and bam. Come on, stinky. Oh, it's starting to sink in that a I'm a person. mum. You love someone so much and they love you. It's a nice feeling. My priorities have definitely changed because he's it. Hawaii, yeah, it's pretty hard to not be there at the moment because a lot of my friends that I would normally be over there with are there and putting things on Facebook and Instagram and all that, making me miss it a lot more. But we'll go next year as a family, I think. Looking a bit red. Harry and Marty have been topping baby Katie up with formula for seven days. Today, they're at the family health clinic for her big weigh-in. So she's over four kilos now. She's excellent. She's um, been playing catch-up. Yes. Two and a half a kilo in a week, so she's uh, <laughs> definitely making up for lost time. It's a lot for a, such a small baby. It's excellent news, actually, and it's, uh, it's a big relief that she's finally started putting on some weight. It's a bit concerning that it's so much. No, it's not. Stop creating problems. She's gonna have weight. She's gonna have problems with her weight anyway. Her self-esteem problem. Don't be my mother. Come on. Female. Come on, baby. Your mum's being mean to me. Because you deserve to be mean to. Next time, two months down the track, self-esteem is high on the agenda. I don't like this one. <laughs> I've got nothing to wear. Amazing. I just felt like such a failure. I can't even look after my own baby. The bubs are getting daddy time. It's gonna get wild. Aren't you supposed to be on Baby Watch? It did poo all over the place again. And everyone's getting back to business. So do you reckon sex is the same? But you had a baby coming out of there. No one likes to hear that about you, lady bits.